All right, week seven of the college football season is upon us. Kind of hard to believe, but what a great week for top 25 teams. A lot of very interesting matchups here. We're going to dive into a whole bunch, come up with a couple of best bets for you here on this edition of the college football bet on it. Joe Ranieri alongside Kelly Stewart and the one and only Marco D'Angelo. And got to love the matchups uh, this week here. And Marco... We'll start with, of course, the number one team in the land here, Texas, getting ready to take on Oklahoma, the Red River shootout. I've been to a few of these over at the Texas Fair, uh, and what a absolute shit show on so many different levels, Marco. Uh, but the game always usually turns out to be out of control, very unpredictable here. So what do you think we're going to get in this edition? Well, first of all, Joe, you're not allowed to call it the Red River shootout anymore. It's a rivalry. We're not allowed to use shootout. And I don't want anything that resembles a shootout because I'm <laughs> on the under in this one as well. So uh, let's start there. Hey, we have uh, Texas and Oklahoma, and it's kind of going to have a little bit of a different flavor. These two play every year, same week of the uh, second Saturday in October every year, but they're still – Conference rivals, just a different conference. These two made the trek over from Big 12 country to the SEC and going from a conference that, well, defense wasn't the strong suit to a conference that's more physical. We'll see how this plays out. Now, for me, Texas has made the transition. They have played well, and their defense has been the strong suit is nobody has scored more than 13 points against them so far this year. That includes holding Michigan to just 12 points in the big house. They went on the road earlier in the year, big early season matchup, and came through looking very, very good. And now they are back on the number one team in the country. Hopefully they get to hold that position a little bit longer than Alabama did last week. Uh, Oklahoma on the other side of the coin, uh, I just don't know what to make of this team. They were an offensive juggernaut all those years with Lincoln Riley, and the further we get removed from Lincoln Riley being the head coach, the worse this offense seems to be. Um, they're just not scoring points. They managed 16 points against Houston, 15 points against Tennessee. Last week, oh, they got 27 points in their last game against Auburn. Yeah, seven of those came on a pick six late in the fourth quarter. And why Auburn was throwing the football with the lead anyways, I have no clue. Uh, so I'm not sold on them being able to score on this Texas defense. Texas, even though this is the big rivalry, they got an even bigger game next week. And that is against Georgia. Uh, I know, you know, for the purists, they're going to say there's nothing bigger than Texas, Oklahoma. Yeah, there is when you're trying to get a national championship and Georgia's right in the road trying to block your path next week. Uh, what I see here is Texas dominating this game, them being able to run the football in this game. And once they get that lead in the second half, they are going to try to uh, get this game over with as quick as possible. Get in, get out and move on to next week, which means they'll run the football in the second half, and they do it well. I think this game goes under the total. I know past history shows a lot of high-scoring games in this one, uh, a.k.a. the shootout, but it won't be this year. It's the rivalry, Red River rivalry under the total for my TV play. I was going to make some sort of obscure Big 8 reference, Marco, but the hell with that, man. No uh, no shootout. We're just going rivalry, and we'll, well leave first it of all, at that. Whoa, 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 whoa. They were not in the Big 8. Well, Oklahoma was in the Big 8. Texas yeah. was not in the Big 8. Right. They were in the Big 12, and they right. ruined everything because they got greedy. Yes. And now yes. I can't wait for them to lose to Oklahoma as two touchdown underdogs this week. We'll, uh, we'll see. Or two touchdown favorites this week. Favorites. Uh, but we'll see. Yes, Sarkeish. Thanks so much. Uh, well, Ken, you got the number two team in the country. Marco had number one. You got the number two team in Ohio State. Another big uh, matchup here in Eugene taking on Oregon. But you got two teams, Cal, that the market feels differently about. I, I don't know why. I mean, Ohio State has not even come close to being in any danger of losing anything. And yet Oregon, every game... <laughs> It seems they play is do or die. And yet here they are at home getting points. 
Uh, is this the game Ohio State finds itself in some danger or no? God, I just keep waiting. I, I, as somebody who had Will Howard under center on their team <laughs> last year, I'm like, okay, when is Will Howard going to have like a two or three interception game? We know he's good for probably one pick, but that defense usually bails him back out. We know that this Ohio State team is super talented, but I'm just like waiting on the edge of my seat. And uh, then on the flip side, you have an Oregon team that you said, you know, lives and dies, whether they play Eastern Washington or, you know, mm. well – another team that I bet against. I am going to stay away from that one, but this is a, a really good game. And as much as I'd like to sit down and break down the X's and O's between the two, I don't know if it matters. I think ultimately this could come down to a coin flip. And I think a lot of people are really expecting fireworks and I'm not. If you break it down further, I think there's going to be a lot of running between both of these teams. 11, uh, the under is hitting 11 of the last 14 games with the Buckeyes per our friends over at the gold sheet. I've been looking at this one a lot going, all right, you know, I know that I'm the contrarian of the group, right? And I, and I know that I love to buck the trends, but man, this one just seems like it's going to be under 53 and a half. Again, doesn't matter who wins as long as the final score is 24-21. About the only thing that matters, right? You know, we just win and advance. And Oregon has done that, even though they've not lived up to expectations. And here they are getting points at home against Ohio State. All right, one of the other games uh, on the board here this week, and a really nice bounce back spot by Lane Kiffin and Old Miss there uh, after that loss to Kentucky. They had to go on a road against South Carolina and absolutely smoked them. Well, now they got to go to LSU. They got to go to Louisiana to take on uh, Brian Kelly and the Tigers. Three and a half right now, 63 and a half. It opened up at three and uh, and the push is towards Old Miss, but I don't see the public running to the window to back Old Miss here. Uh, and LSU coming off a bye. And listen, all of the trends are going to show and tell you uh, Brian Kelly off a bye, LSU at home and a night game, uh, primetime 730. I, all those numbers point to LSU. But the problem that I have is, listen, LSU has a, a good offense. They have zero defense. And by the way, Old Miss's offense is better than LSU's offense. So every time I keep looking at these games and I'm going through the numbers, uh, the the defense is so bad of LSU, and we know what Old Miss does against bad defenses, right? They played Middle Tennessee State, waxed them. Wake Forest, terrible defense, waxed them. Georgia Southern, terrible defense. When they play terrible defensive teams, they end up going over the top offensively and scoring a trillion points here. LSU's defense is no better than any of those three, as far as I'm concerned here. That Kentucky loss was not a bad loss. I don't think people realize how good that Kentucky defense truly is. That is a top five defense in the country right now. And oh yeah, by the way, Ole Miss still put more yardage against that defense than any other offense has done. The bottom line to me is, yes, I get the trends and the coming off the bye and at home for LSU. I get it. But as far as I'm concerned, there is clearly a better team on both sides of the ball in this game, and it ain't LSU. It's Old Miss, and I think that's why you're starting to see that number creep up a little bit. Number nine, Old Miss can ill afford now a loss – against another unranked team here in LSU. All right, we've got our man VR in the house. Why? Well, it's time for that college football gold. And VR, a lot of very fun matchups, a lot of very public matchups coming up this week, Seven. What are you seeing so far? Yeah, some of the bigger matchups Jumping is that the betting syndicates have looked to get out ahead of the, the betting market, meaning... Not sure if they're legit positions, but they're definitely getting out ahead of where they think the money's going to come in. And we're even seeing on, on some of the sides that have high profile matchups where public's coming in on the dog and the wise guys are coming in on the favorite. It's almost like the perfect storm for the, the, the books. And here's an example, the Georgia game. 
Georgia's getting bet up 32, 32 and a half, 33. That's all sharp money. And the only reason it's not moving in one point increments, one and a half point increments is because of the public money opposite. Mm. So you're seeing sharp money actually balancing some of the risk for these books. And that's why you're not seeing such a significant move where otherwise that would be the case because you already have resistance from the public the other way, let alone sharp betting syndicates. And when we cover some of those games, I'll share those with you where we did get resistance and a couple where we haven't, meaning these just continue to get bet up. Now, if you want to dive right in, let's get off with the primetime uh, weekday games. Right away, James Madison minus nine and under 61. Same game, side and total, they're steaming, and that Western Kentucky side at minus 18. When, when I look at both those favorites, it's not public money that's coming in also. In fact, the public money so far is opposite, especially in the Western Kentucky game. The accounts that I've looked at as far as the books, sharp accounts on Western Kentucky, recreational negative EV accounts are all on the dog. That's usually a good sign for the favorite. Now let's move into Saturday's action. First game on the board, 121, Miami O Eastern Michigan. They went over 45, over 45 and a half. Same with Iowa State, West Virginia game, 123, over 50 and a half, over 51. And uh, move to Kentucky Vandy, another mm. side and total situation. But we got some resistance. I'll share those with you. Kentucky got bet up, minus 11, 11 and a half, 12 and a half. 13, when it got to 14, that's when you saw the Vanderbilt money come in. Doesn't mean that Kentucky wasn't the side, but at 11 and a half, 12 is a much different bet than at 14. That's why you saw a different group actually come in and take the 14. The guys that I work with did not try to middle it. They kept the minus 12 in their pocket. They're comfortable with that. And also under 46 from the same group, you would think that it's not correlated if you know, Kentucky's to cover that 11 and a half, it will probably score over 45 points, but that's not how they're playing it. They're playing the favorite and the under. And I see a lot of that where usually the public does the opposite. They bet favorites, they bet them with the over, they bet dogs, they bet them with the under. They take the points because they're expecting lower scoring games. Betting things don't approach it that way. Now let's move on to 150. I touched on that. That's Georgia all the way up to minus 33. Ohio game 158. Here's some resistance. They mm. took one and a half, they laid two and a half, but, and, oh, excuse me, and no resistance. That's one that sticks out. When you see no resistance, that's a huge move. Already at that key three. So you got to remember, there's guys that laid one and a half. There's guys that laid two. They could take three. We know it's a middle in uh, college football, middle in the NFL. Not the case here. Even the minus one and a half have not taken the three on Central Michigan. I'll give you two more that we saw zero resistance on. 178, BYU, laid three and a half. Laid four and a half at five, still no resistance, no Arizona money. And the same thing on New Mexico, New Mexico, four and a half, New Mexico, at five, New Mexico, at five and a half. Now it's at six and a half, mm. still no resistance. Books are afraid to go to seven because at seven, they expect that it's just force a habit. If you laid four and a half or five, you got to take the seven just for even a little bit of your position. So instead they added VIG. That's what the sharp shops did. Instead of going to the seven, that's what they'll do. They'll make the six and a half minus 115. They'll make the six and a half minus 120 just to see where they're at rather than go to that seven. But if they go to seven, that's a telling sign if you're reading the market. Now, a couple games where we did see resistance to a action. 161 Georgia Tech got bet up at three and a half, got bet up at four and a half. But when it reached six, reached six and a half, that's when you saw the, the North Carolina money come in. In fact, came in from the same group that laid three and a half and another group that took the six and a half. So it appears to me that the six and a half looks to be the right side. And we also saw it with Rutgers, which is no surprise. It's a key number. They laid one and a half. They laid two, two and a half at three. That's when they took some Wisconsin money. So when it gets to that key number, always pay attention. Is there resistance or is there not? If there's not resistance around that key numbers, rest assured the EV's probably not gone. It's still there, but they just won't bet the key number. See what I'm saying? So that's one of those situations where we, as followers 
of if, if you're not the originator, even get an opportunity to get a good number because they're going to stop at the key number. They're not going to keep betting it. So there's some situations like that where you're still able to get the best of it. And uh, that was one of those. And finally, let's drop down to two more games. Nevada, 202. Nevada, plus four and a half. Nevada, plus four. Last game on the board, Boise State, Hawaii. That actually came in this morning. They went under 61, under 60 and a half. I think they didn't blast that yet because public money should bet that one over, especially since it's a late game Saturday. So uh, that's some of the college football action so far through Wednesday. And of course, I'll be on last call with Kelly on Saturday to give you that late rundown of college football and, of course, Sunday NFL. Yep, VR, and uh, very important, VR, because we keep seeing these bets come in later and later in the week, right up until kickoff. So pretty important to join us there on last call on Saturdays to get it going. VR, what do you got uh, up, locked, and loaded at your page of wager talk for us this week? I already got a, a UFC package up there because I fired a 4% play. I've just been destroying the the, the MMA cards of late. Then anyway, the industry is not so good last night, but overall, I, I just been, it's been free money, printing money. Um, hit, I think four straight 5% plays in the NFL. I got another one I'm eyeing on for this Sunday's car. So just a great time, man. A lot going on with the baseball playoffs. We'll have the steam room on Sunday. Where we'll go through all the NFL games. So just a lot going on. Jump on board. This is a great time. Get her done, VR. Another edition of College Football Gold. We appreciate it as always, brother. We'll see you again on Saturday. But now it is time to talk some double-digit dogs. And uh, Kelly, you have another one this week that you're eyeing on. By the way, great call. Uh, Cal last week, I believe, uh, great getting double-digit. What? what? Sh- Duh. Uh, hey, Duh. They covered. They covered. I don't care. I want a winner. <laughs> Two weeks in a row, Joe. <laughs> Two weeks in a row. I had Western Kentucky had that game one. Cal right. had that game one. I went to bed. It was 35 to 10. My body woke me up in a fury, very similar to the K-State BYU game. And I was like, <laughs> what is going on? And I knew exactly when I opened that score app what was going on. And Cal mm-hmm. shit down their leg. That's what happened. But the so anyway, name yes, of the segment of is Double Digit Dog, not Outright Money but Lines. I think it went out <laughs> right. <laughs> Listen, congratulations on the win and those that tailed her. Uh, but you've got another Double Digit Dog this week, and I am fully on board here. So uh, break it down for us. Uh, I made a joke in the opening segment of primetime that it was going to be Oklahoma. It's not. I can't make a case for Oklahoma, you guys. I would love to see it happen. We know the dog in that series is absolutely fire historically, but Oklahoma's got a lot of inherent problems. And uh, so do I, because I'm back in a team that uh, just basically had one of the bigger upsets in recent SEC history. That's right. I am going to take Vanderbilt plus the 13 and a half. Pavia, hey, he is a dual threat quarterback that we know can take advantage. But here's the real kicker. I'm not betting on Vanderbilt. I'm betting against Kentucky. Because who the hell is Kentucky in this very basic offense to be laying 13 and a half with a game total of 45? That's it. That's the handicap. Uh, Look, we know what Vandy does. They're going to keep it close with their defense. They've been doing it all season long. Kentucky off that bye week, off that big win over Ole Miss. They should be focused here, but they're not. This is not a Kentucky team that is super disciplined. I understand they have an elite rush defense, but again, that offense is just not very good. And... Maybe they get the win because they do just enough to be able to do so. But again, 13 and a half is insane. If the bookmakers thought Kentucky was going to blow Vanderbilt out in this game, they'd have made it 14 and a half, but they didn't. So we're going to take 13 and a half here with the Commodores, see if maybe they can't just get a little close enough to make that sprinkle (laughs) worthwhile. If we uh, have three soul-crushing losses in a row – yeah, that's just going to be the end for me. <laughs> Why, well, listen. Well, at least we're cashing half that ticket there. Take the damn points with Vandy no, uh, listen, this I'm week. I'm not lying. I'm just going to go be a meteorologist because that is what I've spent my entire week, <laughs> last two weeks on, is just well, forecasting hurricanes. So I got out of Dodge. At this point, I, I'm that if I lose, 
if Vanderbilt just covers and they're never in like really like winning territory, that's how I prefer it. Just have a backdoor cover. Right. But to <laughs> take my guts and rip them out of my body it is just so unfair. And that's what Cal did to me. That's what Western Kentucky did to me. And I, yep. I don't think I could take another one. That is too weird. That is too brutal. Uh, money line losses there, back to back there on monster dogs. But the good news is, Cal, I believe – the deli is open, and if you want to talk about disgusting, uh, there is absolutely a sandwich coming up here, Marco. That is just going to be, woo! What are you looking at this week with the deli, my man? You know, I love when you and Kelly turn your nose up at my sandwiches because that's when these sandwiches come home. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest, they taste even better to me when I can come back and chirp the next week with all the shit you guys throw at me. But, you know, I just have one thing to say to Kelly. If you're going to bed while you still have a game being played, that's on you. That's why they didn't win the game outright. You got to stay up, watch the game, and root them home. Okay, so then tell me, then tell me what happened with Western Kentucky because I watched that game wire to wire. <laughs> you, well, you jinxed them by watching it. Okay. It was thirty-five <laughs> to ten, Marco. I had to do last call the next morning. I was like, you know what? I had a great day. I was five, one and one. And I was like, Cal's going to cover this game. They're going to win out. Right. I can just sit back and smile. Yeah. Good job, Marco. Good job. <laughs> I love poking the bear. I do. You know, it's just it's so much fun. Oh God almighty. Sorry, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> All Go right. Ahead, well, Sam you know. <laughs> All right, here, here, Kelly, I think you're going to like this sandwich, to be Ooh. honest with you. Joe's turning his nose up, but this is the kind of sandwich you like. We've got a conference home underdog in which we're going to take that nobody's going to want because they all saw the other team play on TV last week on a Friday night. Hey, you got Syracuse returning home from a trip to Vegas. Hey, we all know how much fun Vegas is, you know what? And they had a ball because they went in and wrecked the UNLV season. UNLV was talking about they had a very good opportunity. It was going to be uh, dependent on the Boise State game coming up, uh, whether or not they would have a shot at making the playoffs if they could have run the table. And this is a team that might have been just a little – bit too fat and sassy after that Fresno State blowout. Remember all the stuff that happened to UNLV the week before with the quarterback quitting the team and everything else? They had something to prove, and they did it the week before. Syracuse went in and took it to them. It was a dogfight back and forth, went to overtime, 44-41. What a game. Now Syracuse has to travel back all the way across country after that big win and go back out on the road again to play NC State. Yes, this is a conference game, but NC State's just 3-3. Three and three. They're 0-6 against the spread. Nobody's going to want them at 0-6 against the spread because the public only remembers what you've done for me lately. And anybody that's bet NC State this year, they've got tire marks on them from <laughs> getting backed over, uh, run over, I should say. I'm looking at this one. I like NC State here. They've played the tougher schedule. They've already played uh, two big schools. They played Tennessee on a neutral field earlier in the season. Obviously, they lost, and they played Clemson, who's playing much better football after that opening week uh, debacle. I like them to get the job done. As a home underdog here, go back to 2022. They've been a home underdog uh, five times. Uh, they've got the money, uh, excuse me, six times, five and one against the spread as a home underdog. Uh, I'm taking them in this one. Complete the sandwich spot. Syracuse, off of the UNLV win, has undefeated, yeah, I had to get it in there somehow, undefeated Pitt Panthers next week uh, on the docket. So, yes, that's a bigger game. Looking to a top 25 team that's undefeated. We'll see if Pitt survives this week making the top 25 as that's been the curse of death for a lot of schools but i like nc state to win this one outright ugly sandwich but we're taking them plus the points and we're doing a little sprinkle kelly and i'm doing just a little sprinkle so if they just cover i'll be happy i won't be complaining about it because 
you know, having my cake and eat it too. You know, take your win with your double digit dog and be happy. <laughs> that is just disgusting. But you know what, Marco? We'll take it. The more disgusting the sandwich, the bigger the payday. So we are good to go here, my man. I love it. Uh, I also love uh, this game coming up where we look to fade Joe Public. And uh, this week, uh, Joe Public is looking at. Iowa State and saying, oh, this is going to be easy. Taking on what could be what? An overrated uh, West Virginia squad? I mean, they are uh, the ranked team. They are a team that uh, should have no problem going to West Virginia and beating the Mountaineers. And I would say, whoa, 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 settle down here. Because outside of a blown lead versus Pitt, their rival, if you will recall a couple of weeks ago, uh, there, I dare you to find a team that has been playing better football right now, both sides of the ball, especially offensively, than West Virginia. They have been playing some outstanding football. I just watched them go to Stillwater and a place in which they have not won. I mean, Gundy and Oklahoma State has owned, owned West Virginia over the last uh, 10 times that they have played. Well, not anymore. West Virginia has figured it out offensively. They've gotten enough from the defensive side of the ball. They are at home. West Virginia is always a team that we want to look to back in any way, shape, or form at home. I get Iowa State has been, listen, they've been nice, right? They had a great comeback win against Iowa uh, but that's it. They have not really been pushed or challenged at all. I don't believe they should be a favorite in this game. I think maybe the wrong team could be favored in this game here. I love the way West Virginia is playing. I love the points that they're going to be able to put up here. I trust their offense at home more than I trust Iowa State's offense on the road. So, Beware here. While Iowa State may seem and look like the uh, the better team, the public darling Iowa State, no, West Virginia is the team I am looking to pull. Not only the outright upset, of course, covering as well. So fade Iowa State and back West Virginia in this game coming up this weekend. All right. Our good friend Ralph Michaels in the house on location uh, doing a little storm chasing from what I understand. But, Ralph, it's time for a little TNA here this week in college football. Welcome, guys, to my college football TNA play of the week. They are now 2-1 and one this week, and we're going out to the Big 12. Talk about Utah and Arizona State. Let me first talk about two systems that apply to this game. First, a play on Utah. This ATS record, 45 and 23, 66.2%. It says to play on and away favorite with a win percentage over 60%. That scored under 17 points in their last game. And they're a small favorite to minus five. That applies to Missouri and Utah. Again, that ATS record play on Utah, 45 and 23, 66.2%. System number two says to fade Arizona State. If a team is a home dog of three and a half or more and their opponent is off a loss as a home favorite, those teams are 74 and 104, 41 points. 6% against the spread. System one said to play on Utah. System two said to fade Arizona State. And finally, one final fade of Arizona State. Teams that average 50 penalty yards or more playing on a short week with rest under six. Remember, Utah has a much more rest than Arizona State. If that team was previously at home and were game number five and later, those heavy penalty teams 45, 72, and 1, 38.5%, another fade of Arizona State. Now listen, this line is adjusted for Cam Rising not playing. He played the opener. He has missed the last four games. He's warmed up the two previous weeks. If he goes, 
this is this is likely going to be a best bet on my card. If we still don't get a clear answer about the quarterback, I still do like them in this situation off the home loss to Arizona to bounce back this week. My TNA play of the day in college football, play of the week, Utah minus the points at Arizona State. All right, Ralph, we appreciate it as always. Stay safe, but it is now time in week seven for some best bets. And we got a couple of very interesting games on the board here to go over. Kelly, we're going to start with your best bet. And uh, boy, this team kind of uh, enjoyed watching them come back and get the W last week. Uh, you think they can go two for two? Yeah, we'll get into that here in a minute uh, because this is a Louisville team that is just reeling, Joe. Uh, that's why I want to take Virginia here plus the seven and a half, not to mention Miami on deck for this Louisville team. Uh, and then they got to play Clemson here, you know, in the mix. One might say that this is a must win game. God, if we have, do we have an overblown sports betting terminology? I, I think we know how those usually go. If you guys remember, we played against this Ville team a few weeks ago with Navy. This is no different, right? We could not trust this Cardinals defense then, and we cannot trust them now. Joe mentioned this Virginia team last week. I kind of like them. They have this like bend, don't break mentality. This is a, a BC team that we bet against several times. I joined CT on this Virginia game and they were down 14 early. And I was pretty much just going off in the group chat with Joe and Chris and uh, I turned the game off. And what do you know, Marco? They won 24 14. <laughs> no, and all, in all seriousness, those are the types of teams I like to back. I like to back those teams that don't quit when down early. And Virginia showed a ton of grit in that game. Again, I think Louisville is an okay team, but they got a little overhyped and it has been all downhill since. Give me the plus seven and a half with the Cavaliers. Going Virginia to get it done. Great comeback win there at home. And I'm with you, Louisville. Woo! How's SMU doing there, Louisville? Marco, <laughs> uh, interesting here. I understand that uh, there is an opportunity uh, for folks to uh, to hop on board here, I think, uh, and sandwich after sandwich after sandwich. Disc What's going on here, Marco? What do you got going at Wager Talk? Well, Joe, we've got a special that runs through the end of 2024. You can get every play in every sport that I release. And this is the perfect time of the year because everything's going on. We've got hockey just started. We're in the midst of obviously college and NFL football. We've got NBA basketball just around the corner in a couple of weeks. And speaking of NBA, nobody's done NBA better than I have at Wager Talk over the last four years. Up 198 units were the number one NBA um, handicapper. You're going to get everything I release from now to the end of 2024. Special price, $595. Now, we've got like 11 weeks left of 2024. If you bought it at $99 a week, the weekly price, you'd spend almost $1,100. You're going to get this package for $595. That comes out to just $7.50 a day. We charge $39 per day for an all-access package so it's a big savings take advantage of it it's a limited time offer do it now over at wagertalk.com this week joe for the best bet we are going to go for one of the orphans we're going to take oregon state everybody left the pack 12 they left them at home they're all by themselves so every game means something to them because they're basically an independent this year and they're going to take on nevada now, here's the team, Nevada, that had a big uh, performance last week as a road underdog. And I don't want you to overreact to that as a seven-point underdog. They went to San Jose State and almost pulled off the victory. But I'm going to point out that was a horrible spot for San Jose State. They were coming off playing the game before against Washington State on one of those standalone Friday night games. We always talk about these teams get up for these Friday night games because they're going to be on national TV. Uh, the focus is going to be on them. And what type of game was it? Well, it was an absolute barn burner. Uh, the game went uh, into overtime. Both teams uh, got to the 50s in that game. I was tired of watching the game. So I'm sure the players were too. And that was the perfect spot 
to go against San Jose State last week because they were a favorite coming off an overtime loss. That's a great angle to follow. So I'm not making as much out of that good performance from Nevada. And what's it do? It gives them a false sense of security here. You get an inflated line because they look better than they actually were. And I'm looking at Oregon State that has just been pounding the football. They're scoring points against everybody. They've had one bad game this year. And who was that game against? Oh, yeah, that was against Oregon, a team that's ranked in the top five in college football. I'm going to go ahead and take Oregon State here. They play a brand of football, and it's why they were always a hard out in the Pac-12 is because they played physical football. It's something that most of the Pac-12 teams don't play, something that the Mountain West teams don't play, and they're going to be able to run roughshod, in my opinion, over Nevada. It only points on the road. I know Kelly doesn't like to do that, but I always say if I got a team that when we're in the fourth quarter and we're trying to protect the lead, what better type of team to protect the lead than to be doing what you do best, and that is run the football. You can expect Oregon State to run the football 50 times in this game and in most of their games this year. In fact, they've done it in almost every game except that Oregon game, and they've run for over 230 yards in every game except the Oregon game. Take Oregon State, lay the points, is my best bet this week in college football. All right, there you go. Oregon State, uh, everyone loves a good beaver there, uh, Marco, on uh, week seven of the college football season. Maybe make a sandwich of that, my friend. Uh, all right, I am going to go in a uh, in a game in which, and this is going to seem odd. It seems odd to me because I think you have to go back to 2013, which is the last time that you would have seen New Mexico, the Lobos, actually being a favorite over the Air Force Falcons. That is how long it has been. And it seems kind of crazy because you had an Air Force team that over the last two years, guys, has either been first or second in the nation in rushing. This is always year after year running the option, one of the best rushing teams in the country, except... Yeah, not so much this year. Uh, they are terrible this year. They're 58th in rushing, 131st in total offense. They have been outscored in their last three games, 96 to 29. And listen, New Mexico, not exactly a top-notch defense here. But they have Bronco Mendenhall as their new head coach. And Bronco Mendenhall, along with his longtime defensive coordinator that's been with him forever they're coming off a bye week and if there is one coach that is going to understand the option and especially the option against the falcons it would be bronco mendenhall he's had extra time to prepare for this we just watched navy light up air force not to mention that we have a new mexico lobos team who offensively is extremely balanced averaging over 462 yards per game here. And they are going to have no problem running their offense. We're talking about uh, a Air Force defense that averages about 24 points a game defensively giving up. But the problem is that's usually because they can control the pace by running the ball with the option. I don't think that's going to happen in this game. I think New Mexico is going to have Zero issues putting up points in this game and holding what is just a unbelievably and uncharacteristically bad Air Force rushing attack as well as option attack. It is not good for Air Force. You heard uh, Gianni earlier in the gold segment say, opened up at four and a half. It got bet four and a half. It got bet five. It got bet five and a half. It's up to six and a half right now. And there is no buyback. There hasn't been any buyback here. And I think that's because the market sees what I'm seeing. This is blowout written all over it with New Mexico. And I'll, okay, I'll take it under a touchdown because I don't think it's going to be that close. All right. And there you got it in a week seven of the college football season. I can't believe that this is the point where we are at week seven of college football. Don't forget to hit that like button if you could. Make sure you visit Marco's disgusting 
sandwiches over on his page. Take advantage, of course, of that opportunity there to partner up with him. And, of course, make plans to come back and join us again for week eight of the college football season on behalf of Ralph and Gianni and Kelly and Marco. Guys, we appreciate the time as always. Don't forget, click the video on your screen right now and check out all the rest of the big game previews we got here at Wager Talk TV. And at the end of the day, go ahead and bet on it. We'll see you again next week.